Hey, it's good. How are y'all? Good. How are you? Good. 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 I feel like I'm being interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> I like that shirt. Cool, oh, thanks. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that is pretty pimp. <laughs> I actually bought it for it. We did a special for the DVD. Really? Yeah, I had a bunch of garb on. It was cool. Congratulations, by the way, on the box set baffler meal. Oh, yeah, thanks. That I'm is awesome. That. Yeah. How did it, that come about, like the vetting process of what to add you or what, what to... We were just uh, one day told about it. And really? I said, really? They're doing that? Mm -hmm. uh, and they said, yeah, we are. So, uh, we're just kind of... 20 DVDs. Yeah, that's, that's, that's intense. Like, at this point, we're, nobody really has a DVD player. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like a bygone thing, which... Yeah. You, Aquatine started on DVDs. I think it's just, it's good that it stays through DVDs, too. I agree. And especially, we didn't even like uprise it. It's still, it's mm -hmm. still just 1080 or whatever, so... Yeah, that's awesome. It's got to stay old school with it. You guys have been around like Adult Swim like from the beginning. You guys have been, you know. Dude, I was here before the Adult yeah. Swim. I was in the hallway writing Space Ghost Show. It was not Adult Swim. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was right so, next to the community whoa. printer. I'd be like trying to figure out what I was doing. And what do you attribute the the stain? Because I mean, their kids. You know, I mean, I have, my son is 15 now, and yeah. he's watched it this whole life. I don't know, man. I think we were just doing, it was like a lab. It was like, we were just under the radar financially. We weren't like on a blow budget. And we just happened to do cool stuff that people liked. So we were fortunate to be in that position. I have a question. I'm a gamer. Right. And I think the whole team period could be at any fighting game. Like right now we have multiverses. Yeah. What? Like if you can, if your characters can be in any video game, what video game would you want them to be? Okay, so now I'm not a gamer, <laughs> so you stumped me on that. But I'm watching my kids play things. Um, man, I don't know. I mean, what kind of stuff do you like? Do you like shooters? Yeah, that, too awesome. overblown, you think? Yeah. So many I say a Street Fighter or like a. We got multiverses yeah. out now. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Like, if maybe you can like mix Sea of Thieves with a Mortal Kombat. Oh, mm -hmm. what do you think okay. of that? That would be fire. You play that? Yeah, I mean, the gore could be there with Mortal Kombat for sure. That's what I'm saying, yeah. I can like, see Meatwad doing something gore. I can see Meatwad, <laughs> yeah, traveling through time. That's a good That's our third movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Nice. Well, thank fun. you. <laughs> How has the creation of this movie evolved over time since it's been, you know, a handful of years since the end of the show and then even longer since the last film? You know what, honestly, uh, when the pandemic hit, um, our, our industry kind of caught on fire because we didn't have to all get together and action and stuff. And honestly, and I'm just being real about this. They called and said, well, will you make a second opportunity? And we said, yeah, of course we will. I was in my backyard pulling weeds and they called and said, they just called and said, do you want to make a sub of them? And I'm like, yeah. So we didn't really have to sell it. We didn't, but, but what they did was they went back and they got the old school stuff that was like kick ass, you know, like Aquatina and Rockalos and Venture Brothers. And they said, now's the time to do this while nobody can do live action stuff. So, um, and yeah, after that, and it took us a few months to figure out what the movie was going to be, and I just kind of went. Just like the episodes, you know, we just like, after the first season or two, we could sit down and crank an episode out really quickly in the writing phase. Mm -hmm. and just go for it. Do you think with that in mind that Aqua Team could just go on indefinitely? I think it could, and I think it should. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, you know what, it's like, it's kind of a, I don't know, to me it's like, it's just classic stuff. Like, you can't be real contemporary with it because people so want to make stuff, but, um, and plus it's a no-brainer. I just put the switch and everybody's same studio, same people, we're all together, just turn it back on. There's no way out. So yeah, they should do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of curious, do you think if God rested on the seventh day, he would binge all 20 DVDs yeah. at once? Yeah, you look like Chris Kattan. Thank you. It's like Walter Mellon. <laughs> it's very flattering. Thank you very much. And Mr. Feather. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and just the process to complete the film, from when it started, the inception of it, to actual completion, how laborious was that? Um, I mean, it took a long time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't laborious because we were having fun doing it. Oh, of course. Uh, yeah. But interesting enough, I mean, we did we did the whole thing over the phone. We wrote the whole script over the phone wow. because nobody could get together. Mm -hmm. we, 
we did all the animatic meetings, all the animation meetings over Zoom. Um, wow. It was a while before we could all get back in, like, but laborious, it, you know, it took a while, but it was a really, mm -hmm. really fun time. We mixed the whole thing with Skywalker. So it sounds That's great. amazing. Yeah. George Lucas is in the movie. His voice is in the movie. I won't tell you where it is, but he's in there laughing. Sweet. Yeah. And I would think the explosions would sound amazing. Oh, they roar, man. It's like Jurassic Park. Ah, uh, sweet. <laughs> In some of the footage that's been out there, there's like a, obviously like a, a, a thing, inspiration, the thing. Were there any other like touchstones or inspirations that you drew from? Well, just the title Plantasm is obviously a thing too. So I'm a big horror buff. Dave and I have nothing in common, which I think helps make a good show. Yeah. <laughs> from music to movies to almost everything. And uh, so, yeah, so there's Plantasm, which is Plantasm. Um, and then uh, the thing, obviously, in fact, I sent that clip to, I don't know John Carpenter specifically, but I know his wife mm -hmm. sent it to her, and they both loved it. Uh, we even said his name in the, in the movie. <laughs> it's John Carpenter's a thingamajig. Uh, I'm always referencing, like, I love all that old Evil Dead stuff and just all that shock horror. And, and uh, this man just find his way in. So they actually did in a lot of episodes as well, so. That's like one of the most obscure references you have in the movie for like horror. Oh man, that's a good one. Uh, in one of the episodes we had Carl, it's when the sirens are coming, I think, to bring the skin off and he has the space gate from Phantasm. Oh man, and he, wow. and he touches it and they come through. I don't think anybody knows what that is except me. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm kind of curious, who's decision was it to put Danzig in an episode? Danzig in an episode? It was Dave and I just decided. Mm -hmm. even, oh my god, so this is great. So we call him up, mm -hmm. somehow we get in touch with him, and he's like, yeah, I'll do it, however he talks. And, uh, <laughs> so, so we had our artists draw on a blank piece of paper, Danzig, right? Yeah. We sent it to him, and he's like, I'm way taller than that. <laughs> I'm like, what's the reference? There's no reference. It's mm. like, you could do, there's no R2-D2 standing next to you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he was a uh, he did a good job. Mm -hmm. uh, he did, you know, he's kind of a jerk, but that's kind of what he was in the, in the episode, yeah, too. Yeah, so, it's true. Par so for the course. Out perfectly. <laughs> Does he charge by the whoa -oh? You know what? That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a particular character that you enjoy writing for the most or that comes easiest to you? I think we kind of just somehow all of them. Like Dave does Carl and me, I do secondary characters, but I think it's a 50 50 split. Like I'll throw out Carl lines that are working him and they're going out. I think it's just kind of like we kind of already know these characters so much that like, uh, the people just kind of really it's like in their minds. So I wouldn't say I have a favorite to write with. And when we do the Moon Nights, it's just how we're just going there yell shit. <laughs> Aquatine is on like the Mount Rushmore of adult animation, especially in Adult Swim. What is it like seeing the impact, you know, that this show has had on future generations of adult animation? Man, it's cool. It's just fun to see that people can uh, appreciate what we did there. And, and I, just, I just love that we did kind of, in a way, like, set Adult Swim on the map to like say this, this, this thing that nobody believed in, nobody wanted us to do. It was a really hard uphill battle to get the pilot done. Um, and it just it just kind of took on a life of its own. And we're real lucky that that happened. And uh, I was telling somebody earlier, it's like nobody gave us development notes or we just did what we thought was funny because the financial risk was so low and it just like, yeah. boom. Wow. Yeah. It is, it is a paragon though to you. Uh, just the amount of animation that's come thus far since that yeah. geared towards adults. I mean, groundbreaking, because, I mean, before that, it, it, it was niche, but I, I yeah. think that because Aqua Teen came out, it just blew the entire spot up and paved the way. I think so, too, and I remember other networks really put together their kind of block of that stuff, mm -hmm. and it was, like, it was like they were almost trying too hard to be like what we were, but we were just doing what we wanted to do. Like, we didn't, yeah. we weren't saying, we're doing this to appeal to this. We just mm -hmm. did what we we just do we want to do with kid stuff, you know? It definitely so, shows. Yeah. Just a labor of love. Right on. So, like, what would y'all say that keeps, make sure that y'all keep it fresh, especially throughout the years, uh, to make sure that the content pushes the needle and 
bring up certain topics and certain things that all of them as a group together can talk about or go through. What's like your inspiration to always keep it fresh all the time, no matter what this series? That's a good question. Like. Things that actually happen to us in real life. Okay. Yeah, pretty close. We fictionalize them, but there's a lot. I mean, a lot of this is like. When we write a script, we'll go hang out and talk about it. takes us an hour to get to the script because we can talk shit about what we did last weekend or what happened. And I donated my car and we made a kidney car. And it's like, honestly, I would say 75% of it is stuff that we've been through, like for real, you know, lives. And then we just aquatine it up. You know? That's what makes it so personal. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's what friends. it is. Right? Yeah, I can see my friends yeah. and I do some stupid things like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, they, and all the characters have their own, like, you know, point of view and dynamics. That, to me, I just, like, I know these people. Like, you know I'm Frylock and you know it's Shake somewhere. It's like, it's not like they're really food for, like, characters or people that have all this. They're like different aspects people. of my personality. Like, I got a Frylock. Exactly, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're done. All right. Thank, Thank you, y'all. So Thank you. Thank you.